Hi guys, welcome back. It's Tracy with TR's Tarot Talk 1111. Welcome to my channel. If you're new, I am so grateful to have you here. Um, I normally do tarot readings, but this is my channeled message from Spirit for the new moon in Aries energy. I haven't written anything down. I didn't do channeled writing. I took a bath. As you can see, I look like a drowned rat. I took a bath and I prayed and meditated and I asked Spirit to show me um, what is the theme of this new moon in Aries. Because the full moon, the, the last one we did, was all about, you know, Virgo energy. How do we get out of our own way? What do we need to do to quit self-sabotaging, right? Well, while I was taking my bath, by the way, I forgot to say hi to all of my regulars. I love you guys. I am so grateful for you. Sorry it's been so long since I've been on. However, my son... Um, is home from school and that takes up a lot of my time. All right, so back to the channeled message I got during meditation is the theme of the new moon in Aries is change. Big changes, guys. Big, big, big. So... I, you know, I'm sure all of you out there are struggling with um, fear. Hopefully you're not, but I'm sure some of you are around this coronavirus. And if you follow my channel, you'll remember back several, maybe a couple months ago, where I channeled a message that everything was a perfect orchestration, right? Every soul on the planet at this time has a role to play. And that role is really interactive. It's like a woven fabric. Um, Spirit brought me the visualization of a symphony, right? And that everybody, everybody was vital to the finished work, okay? From the maestro to the musicians, to the musical instruments, to the chair, to the stage, to the audience, to the cleaning crew, the advertising agents, everything. Everything was interwoven, right? I didn't realize when Spirit channeled that message to me that they were kind of preparing us for this pandemic situation that we're in right now. Um, but while I was meditating today and I was asking spirit for a message to bring to you guys about, you know, how do we cope in this time where everybody's, you know, being asked to stay home, stay quarantined, um, the media is feeding us a, a lot of fear porn. They're so one-sided. I mean, it's so horrible the way they, they spread the fear. Because, you know, the truth is, and I don't have statistics, I didn't write them down, but I did look them up. Statistically, there are more people that die in a day to natural causes than the coronavirus. There are more people that die in a day due to addictions than the coronavirus, way more. Way more people that die in accidents than the coronavirus. You stand a better chance of going out on the freeway and getting in a accident and dying than you do catching the coronavirus. Okay, or, well, I shouldn't say catching. Spirit just chucked me. It's very easy to catch. That's what sets it apart from other viruses, is the fact that it was engineered in a lab, made and created, Probably, definitely, I know where it was created, Spirit showed me, but I'm not here to point fingers. Everybody plays a role, right? It's, it's the orchestration. So basically, <clears throat> to get back on topic, um, the regular flu, by the way, is, is much more, there are more deaths 
because of the regular flu than the coronavirus. So what spirit showed me is the coronavirus, that what sets it apart and different from other viruses is it's not natural. It was man-made. Um, and it spreads faster. It spreads a lot faster. Um, I was also shown by spirit that it's part of our destiny. Everything is interwoven. Everything plays a part. And so I asked spirit, you know, I was a little angry. I'm like, this is unfair. You know, my dad's in his late 70s. He has, a, what's it called? COPD. So I fear for him, you know, I worry about him. <clears throat> so I was a little angry when I was doing my meditation and I asked spirit, why? Why do good people have to die because of bad people? And um, I was led to a lot of beautiful visions, visions of change. This coronavirus is a catalyst for huge changes, changes in the way we do everything from how we communicate with one another how we care about one another, how we show up in the world. It's going to reveal to us the nature of the way we show up on Mother Earth, you know. We've been pillaging and taking, and there's still people pillaging and taking. You know, you go to Walmart or you go to a store, and you see young 20-something, 30-something, 40-something people that are healthy buying all the hand sanitizer, all the masks, all the toilet paper. Good Lord. Why people are worried about their rear end, I'll never know. But we live in a dualistic environment, so that we need contrast. Don't get angry at those people that are hoarding because they are part of the bigger picture. They are, when we witness something like that, it stirs emotions within us. Emotions about how we don't want to be, how we shouldn't be, how we, we might have been one or two times or more in our lives. So all of this pandemic stuff, Spirit showed me is a catalyst for change. We are definitely going to evolve as a species from this pandemic. And it might get a little worse before it gets better. And quite frankly, it almost needs to. Because if it goes away right now, I have a feeling that everybody would just kind of wipe the sweat from their brow and say, wow, that was a close one. And probably go back to business as usual, right? Go back to the, the ways of being, of eating unhealthy, not even caring about our bodies, which are one of the biggest gifts God ever gave us. We couldn't be here having experiences, falling in love, walking by streams, listening to the birds, feeling the sun on our face, listening to music, writing poetry, creating, creating. Want to see what me and my son created? We were bored, so we decided to color. And look, 
I colored dragons, guys, because another thing Spirit showed me during this time is that during the change, we are slaying dragons. We are ridding ourselves of toxic thoughts, toxic behaviors, toxic foods. Be grateful for the contrast, you know. The bad guys, quote, quote. The dark ones, the ones that rape and pillage and take advantage, undermine, control. It's a revolution that's happening or that's going to happen because of this coronavirus. And I was, I was angry. I was like, Spirit, what about all the beautiful souls out there that are dying from this, that didn't choose this, that had no choice, you know? Spirit told me to think bigger, to think without the body, you know? Because that's all it's Spirit is. It's God without a body, you know? Yeah, it's separate consciousnesses. That's a big word, consciousness is. You can call it angels, guides, deceased loved ones, ancestors, ascended masters, whatever name you put to it. You can call it galactic family, off worlds, on worlds, inner worlds, multi dimensional. But that's another thing that God showed me. And yes, I choose to call it God, but you can choose to call it spirit or universe, whatever you want. By the way, I left my phone on because there's some data I pulled up on the new moon that I'm going to read to you. So um, if it rings, I'll just click it off or if it dings or whatever. You guys know the drill. So back to the, the vision that I had, you know, I was I was angry. And Spirit said, you need to take the larger perspective. Nothing ha happens to you. Everything happens for you. And when bad things happen and bad choices are made, the contrast is necessary for us to learn from that so that we never make those mistakes again. But being in a sleep or unawakened group of embodied consciousness. We've been making choices without the knowledge of our own divinity. You know, like I told you before, God showed me that God is everything. He's the alpha, she, he, she, it is the alpha, the omega, everything that was, everything that is, and everything that ever shall be. That means it's you, it's me, it's anything with life. And anything that doesn't have life are our creations because we are a creator race. So <clears throat> Dolores Cannon, if you haven't heard from her or heard about her, look her up. She was a she's deceased. Now actually I think she's probably reincarnated because she has more work to do. However, um, she did a lot of really good work about, um, the, she called it the quantum healing hypnosis technique. And she regressed people, she learned as a psychiatrist how to regress people and accidentally regress them into past lives. And it intrigued her and she worked with that. And I won't go into all that, but you guys can look her up. She's super cool, and there's a lot of information there. And because I've had that in my contrast, in my experience, that teaching of Dolores's, I understand that everything is energy. Everything is energy. So energy can't be killed. It can't be destroyed it just changes form and part of the gift of life that that creation gives us is the ability to recreate 
it's what the tarot is all about, you know, going from, uh, it's the fool's journey. It's the hero's journey or the fool's journey. You choose. But it's going from zero and going through all of life's ups and downs and lessons and getting to the, the end of a cycle, you know, the death, the rebirth. It's a gift, guys, that we are able to die and re be reborn and to choose how we show up in this beautiful matrix that was designed for us. That, by the way, is run by the Law of Attraction. So if you haven't learned about Law of Attraction yet, you're going to want to check that out. Because that's the key to this major change that this coronavirus is bringing. You see, in our sleep, sleepiness, sleepfulness, whatever you want to call it, unawareness, we created some really bad stuff. Or other people created it and we just got on board, right? Well, there's consequences for that. A lot of consequences. And those consequences, quite frankly, began altering our state of creation or our ability to create. We've forgotten that we are a powerful, conscious creator capable of creating anything anything that we desire but there's a key in there somewhere about you know what what is what should we create and just because we can do it doesn't mean we should right this earth is a gift it was gifted to us without this earth and these bodies we can't exist here we can't fall in love we can't play in the streams and rivers and and enjoy our children and our dogs and our lovers and our, our fears and our joys and our experiences. We just, we're here to experience. We are God experiencing. So change, guys, big changes. Changes need to happen. We need to be more mindful of how we care for this beautiful vessel that was given to us to house our energetic soul, our light beings, our, you know, to, to give us the opportunity to taste and smell and hear and see and feel. We've been cut off from that sixth sense, you know, that inner knowing, that third eye. They've been blocking our they, meaning those who chose a different, lower vibrational way of showing up. They know. They've always known. Is my camera still working? <laughs> 